dear students in this lecture we are going to learn various governing law in different mode of heat transfer so first we learn the conduction as all of you know the conduction is the transfer of energy from more energetic particles of a substance to the adjacent less energetic one as a result of interactions between the particles in gas and liquids the conduction is happening due to the collisions and the diffusion of molecules because of their random motions in solid it is due to the combinations of lattice vibrations and the energy transported by the free electrons let us understand the conduction in one solid bar with the help of this figure here you can see the temperature of one side of bar is t1 and on another side the temperature is t2 here the t1 is greater than of t2 it means the heat is transferred from the t1 side to the t2 side having the bar having the thickness of delta x and the cross sectional area of this bar is a so here the rate of heat transfer through the plane layer is directly proportional to the temperature difference across the layer and the heat transfer area but it is inversely proportional to the thickness of the layer it means the rate of heat transfer that is q dot is directly proportional to the temperature difference it is very easy to understand the temperature difference is higher the rate of heat transfer is higher so q dot is directly proportional to the temperature difference t1 minus t2 and it is also directly proportional to the cross sectional area but here the q dot means a rate of heat transfer by a conduction is inversely proportional to the delta x which is the thickness of a layer so mathematically we can write that the rate of heat transfer is directly proportional to the cross sectional area and the temperature difference but it is inversely proportional to the thickness now in another way q dot here q dot is a only indicating the rate of heat transfer but in this phenomena the heat is transferred by the mode of conduction that's why we are writing down the q dot conductions which is equals to k a t1 minus t2 divided by delta x and here the t1 minus t2 is comes a negative sign later on we are discussing why it is negative sign is there so final equation is becomes a q dot conduction is equals to minus k a dt by dx which is in the terms of watt so equation q conduction equals to minus k dt by dx is generally known as the fourier law of heat conductions now we are discussing one by one the quantity appears in these equations so first we discuss the k if you go back in that discussions there is we are not discussing anything about the k so here first we discussing about the k k is the quantity which is a, a physical quantity it is called as the thermal conductivity and thermal conductivity is indicated by k and the definitions of thermal conductivity in general is a measure of ability of a material to conduct the heat it means it shows the ability of any material in which in which fashions it conducts the heat here we are discussing the two another examples in example a the heat uh, heat is flow that is 4010 watt per meter square across the uniform means the 1 meter of thickness and having a temperature difference of 30 to 20 then we can say that the copper having a thermal conductivity of 401 watt per meter square degree kelvin or degree centigrade similar way in example number 2 and i am taking the metal that is silicon now heat is conducted in the directions of temperature decreasing it means heat is traveled in the directions of temperature decreasing order and that's why the slope of this line if you draw this line 
The slope of this line is comes as a negative on the temperature versus thickness graph and that's why the minus sign in this equations will come. So uh, we can say that the negative sign is indicating in this equations that heat is transfer in positive directions of A is positive quantity. Temperature gradient dt by dx is known as the temperature gradient. It is nothing but a simple the slope of line on the Tx diagram. Now here one thing we, uh, you need to keep in, in your mind that A is the cross sectional area. It means it is the area perpendicular to the directions of heat travel. In this figure you can see heat is transferred in these directions. We need to take a cross sectional area which is perpendicular to the directions of heat travel. A equals to W into H. Here these things is very important in every numericals. In later on discussions you need to remember the cross sectional area in the uh, Fourier's law is always a perpendicular to the directions of heat travel. Now we are going to discuss a convection. Convection is the mode of energy transfer between the solid surfaces and adjacent liquid or gases that is in motions and it involves the combined effect of conduction and the fluid motions. Let us see one example. Here in this image we can see the heat is transferred from the hot body means a hot block or the hot surfaces by a air in the mode uh, of the heat convections. The faster the fluid motions, the greater convection heat transfer. It means if the air is low with the very high velocity or the fluid is moving with very high velocity, the rate of heat transfer is increases. In the absence of any bulk fluid, bulk fluid it means here we treat this fluid, any fluid as a bulk fluid which is in motions. The heat transfer between the solid surfaces and adjacent fluid is pure by conductions. It means if there is no movement of any fluid particles around the solid surfaces, then we can say that the heat is transferred by pure conduction only. So what is the conclusion of this slide is the fluid must be in motion then and then we will treat the uh, heat transfer by convections otherwise it becomes only pure conduction form of heat transfer. Uh, let us go to check the governing laws in convections. So here the Q dot convection is, is equals to H A S T S minus T infinite. Let us understand the different terms. But before that this law is generally known as Newton's law of cooling and which is a governing law for the convection mode of heat transfer. Now we are going to discuss the various quantity appears in these equations one by one. H which is called as a convective heat transfer coefficient. The unit of the same is watt per meter square into degree centigrade. As the surface area through which the convection heat transfer takes place. Ts means a surface temperature and T infinite which is indicating the bulk fluid temperatures. Now the question is arises why it is called as infinite. See whenever the heat is transferred from solid surfaces to the fluid the temperature of fluid is increases but we treat as a sufficient amount of fluids in which the temperature cannot be rises and that's why we are indicating the T infinite. It transfer the heat but the temperature of fluid cannot be increases. We are taking the temperature of bulk fluid as a constant and that's why it is indicated by T infinite. If you refer the concept of thermal reservoir, uh, heat without the rate of heat transfer the temperature remains a constant. So same concept we are implementing over here and that's why we are indicating T infinite. The convector heat, uh, heat transfer coefficient. Now question is arises that what about the H and convective heat transfer coefficient. So convective heat transfer coefficient is not a surface property. It is a properties of fluid or we can say the property of bulk fluids and it is experimentally determined parameter whose value depends on the such uh, variables which is influencing the convection heat transfers. So first point that is surface geometry means the convective heat transfer coefficient is depends on surface geometry then the nature of fluid motions how it is fluid is moving then the properties of fluids like a density 
then specific gravities like that viscosity and uh, the bulk fluid viscosity and last one is the bulk fluid velocity so experimentally we can able to calculate h and from h we can able to calculate the q convexions here i'm going to discuss some amount some of the standard value of convective heat transfer free convection of gases it is lies in the range of 2 to 25 if free convections of various liquid it is comes in the range of 10 to 1000 force convective of gas it means you apply the blower or you apply the fan then the convective heat transfer coefficient is increases because it depends on the velocity then force convections of uh, liquid boiling and condensation is also given in this slide now we are going to discuss the radiation as all of you know the radiation is the energy emitted by the matter form of in the form of electromagnetic waves or the photon as a result of changing electronics configurations of atoms or molecules unlike conduction and convection the transfer of heat by the radiation does not require presence of any medium in the heat transfer studies we are interested in the thermal radiations which is the form of radiation emitted by body because of the temperature only it means there are so many types of radiations are there but in this study in the subjects we are only study the thermal radiation which is caused by the temperature of that atoms all body at a temperature above absolute zero emits the thermal radiations and radiation is a volumetric phenomena and all solid liquid gases are emit absorb or transmit the radiations to varying degrees it means every matters on this earth is emit the radiations it absorb the radiations it means there are various properties are associated with the radiations however the radiation is usually considered to become a surface phenomena for solids it means in a case of solids it is not treated as a volumetric phenomena we are only treating as a surface phenomena now we are going to learn the governing law for the radiation so here radiation it means the emissions as well as absorptions so here the radiation heat emitted by any matter which is calculated using this formula that q dot emit maximum here the word another one comes maximum later on we discuss that why it is maximum equals to sigma into a s t s to the power 4 so this law is called as stephen boltzmann's law and sigma is called as stephen boltzmann constant and having the value of 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt per meter square kelvin to the power 4 this equation here the word we are using that is a maximum so here maximum why we are writing as a maximum because this equation is applied for black body black body means the idealized surface that emits the radiations at maximum rates and that's why we are writing maximum or we can write q emit black body now question is arises sir that if the body is not a black body then how we can calculate the emissions so here generalized equations for the q radiation heat emitted that is e into sigma a s t s to the power 4 again q dot emit equals to e sigma a s t s to the power 4 the new quantity comes over here that is e e means the emissivity and emissivity is a measure how closely surface is near to the black body emission it means the any body which is emitting a radius uh, radiations we consider or we can compare with the black body and how much it is closest to that if black body is there then emissivity is one and if it is white body then emissivity is zero so suppose uh, we have discussed one example here we are considering a black body the surface temperature is 400 kelvin yes it is very important whenever you are applying the law of stephen boltzmann's temperature you need to consider in absolute scales means temperature must be in kelvin if the surface temperature is given in the degree centigrade you need to convert it into the kelvin first and then and then you need to apply this equation so q emit maximum equals to sigma into ts to the power 4 because we are considering area as a one meter square so we get 
from this equation we get the q emitted is 1452 watt per meter square so in this way we are able to calculate the emissions from any body by radiations here the emissivity of different materials is given in this table suppose if you have a white paint then it is near to the point 9 suppose it is if you have aluminum foil generally we are using aluminum foil to keep our food as uh, or we can say is, it is uh, working as insulators because of the emissivity is 0.07 thank you thank you for attending this lecture